how big a window you have oh, to yeah. refeed right. to maximize muscle growth. So, so we actually did that first experiment in rats. So Josh Anthony and Tracy Anthony were in my lab. Uh, that was just before Lane came. Uh, and what we were looking at was exhaustive exercise, again in rodents. We were looking at this catabolic state. We were trying to look at how the muscle regulated recovery. And so we were looking at what were called initiation factors, and we discovered the link between leucine and an initiation factor called EIF4. And that is sort of the downstream effect of mTOR. mTOR is a regulator, and it stimulates EIF4 and S6 and other initiation factors. And so what we found was that when you came out of an exhaustive exercise, muscle is catabolic until you took in enough leucine to reverse it. And so we started looking at feeding right after mm -hmm. exercise. And Stu Phillips and a number, you know, Doug Patton Jones and Luke Van a lot of people sort of picked up on that. Um, okay, so now the caveats. Um, the biggest effect of feeding right afterwards is about a two hour window but that's in untrained individuals. Um, if you begin to look longer, you can have a bout of resistance exercise and you'll detect a difference. You'll begin to make them, you'll start regulating that red one protein factor and you'll see an anabolic effect the next day, 24 hours, 36 hours later. So when does your protein effect? Well, it makes it more effective all the time. Um, the more trained you get, the less you're going to see a post-exercise effect. So if you're beginning training during the first four weeks, post-exercise protein probably makes sense. Mm. If you're well-trained, you're basically training the same way and you've been doing it for six months, I don't see any effect difference between having protein within two hours after exercise versus just having your three or four meals per day. You won't see any difference in either mass or strength. Yeah, I remember having this discussion with Lane as well and, and being very surprised by that, right? Being but pleasantly surprised, by the way, because it says, hey, look, once you get to a point where you're well trained enough, you don't have to be so maniacal about meal timing. You can just focus exactly. on the big picture, which is total protein, protein quality and spreading it out such that you don't exceed the metabolizable fraction of it at any one sitting. Right, exactly. And people, you'll hear trainers take that last statement, metabolizable energy, and you'll hear trainers say, well, you can't use more than 30 grams at a meal. You won't digest it or whatever. That's not true. I mean, you'll digest and absorb 100 grams of protein at a meal, but muscle in particular only has a window of around 20, 25 to 60, depending on protein quality, where it can use it. The liver will use all of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We have what is known as first pass metabolism of protein, which confuses the issue even more. When you eat a meal of protein, approximately 50% of the protein is, 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 is degraded to nitrogen and carbon before it ever gets to the blood, almost 50%. The one exceptions, the exception to that are the branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, valine, and over almost 75, 80% of those get into the blood. And we're back to that teleological argument. Why did muscle learn to sense that? Because that basically shows up in the blood in direct proportion to the meal. And the muscle learned to sense that as a meal quality. It says, oh wow, this meal has adequate quality for me to, to trigger this very expensive process of protein synthesis, protein turnover. And until it sees that signal, it won't do it. Thank you.